I'm here with Carl Brasse. Carl, you are a, a, a real leader in the field of uh, YAG laser vitreolysis for, 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 for floaters. I'm very happy that you're here. You've uh, also uh, run some instructional sessions on it, and I want to talk about um, wh what what the things are that the ophthalmologist has to know right. uh, about doing uh, YAG laser right. lysis. But let, let's get one thing off the table first. Is it something dangerous? First of all, thank you very much for uh, getting the chance to talk to you again, uh, Joshua. Um, it's always a pleasure uh, talking to you. Uh, I don't consider it as a dangerous procedure. I've now done 700 uh, treatments within two years in uh, about 300 patients. Uh, I never ever had one serious complication. Uh, you might have on and off a pressure rise, but I'm prepared uh, to deal with that. Uh, I usually give them uh, and, and, and co-shop uh, twice uh, after the treatment and I send them home with steroids uh, six times per day. And if I use a high amount of energy, I even see them the same day, uh, two hours after the procedure again. But uh, just a s slight pressure rises, uh, that happens, uh, uh, but no real complication I I've ever seen. Uh, Carl, it, um, I'm, I'm interested in the selection of appropriate patients uh, for the, the, the procedure, and my question is specifically for the, an ophthalmologist who's beginning to do this, this, this procedure, who are good patients uh, to you know, get one's toe in the water, so to speak? Right. So the good patients are the pseudophagic patients. Uh, in my study, the first 250 cases, I, I had 67% of pseudophagic patients, and you don't have to take care of uh, of the lens, obviously. The lens and the retina uh, are, the, the, are the, the parts of the eye where you have to be careful, of course, not, not to hit them. But I'm more worried about the lens than about the retina. If you hit the retina, uh, it's very unlikely that you hit the optic nerve or the macula. Uh, uh, and, uh, but if you hit the lens, it's quite likely that you run into trouble uh, due to cataract. So, so how, how, start how, how much of a buffer do you, do you need between those two structures? So for the retina, I do three millimeters and for the lens as well. But again, um, maybe even four, uh, because some of the energy scatters backwards uh, towards uh, the laser when you achieve the plasma effect. Uh, so um, who are good starting patients? For the, you know, one, one of the things that, that you mentioned is uh, floaters that are more anterior. Right, I started with uh, patients I, that I knew for a long time that were happy with me with a cataract operation and where there was no other ocular pathology, where there is an obvious uh, floater, an obvious vice ring, uh, where you do not have any clouding of the cornea, where you do not have glistening of the IOL. They are perfect uh, patients to start with. Uh, and one of the other points that you made is is that not only do they have to dilate nicely, but uh, if they have had a uh, capsulotomy, uh, a posterior capsulotomy, that the capsulotomy itself has to be adequate. Right. Uh, quite often it happens that you get a capsular phimosis or that the, the opening of the YAG capsulotomy is small. I see that quite often, uh, 2.5, 3 millimeters. I enlarged that first. Uh, it's nice to have a diameter of 4.5 to 5 millimeters. Uh, that makes it easier to visualize the floater, decreases reflexes, and of course, uh, you get the full amount of energy of your treatment beam into the eye uh, without any reflections. Now, Carl, the, the, the patients who are most disturbed uh, by floaters are those who have had an acute PVD because suddenly you know the floater wasn't there right. and now it's there. I, are these appropriate patients to treat? That's a good question. Uh, obviously, um, we, we see a couple of those every day in our practice, complaining of flashes of light, uh, black spots in the eye. They they are shocked what's going to happen. Uh, these will 
eventually uh, be candidates for uh, treatment, but you have to wait for six to nine months until the, the traction in the vitreous head has settled. At that time, you should find the retinal holes and treat them first. Uh, because when you do uh, YAC uh, vitreolysis treatment at that point of time and they get a detachment, you are in trouble. Uh, because then they claim you that uh, you cause the detachment. Uh, so be careful not to do that. Uh, yeah, this is uh, really one of the m most important recommendations for, for colleagues to start with the procedure. Now, you said um, that there are special considerations with multifocal lenses, uh, and we're going to show a picture right. of, of, of this too. Can you explain why we ha have to be concerned with the two different focal distances? Right. When you focus onto a floater, you will have two foci in the eye from the near and uh, distant part of the multifocal lens. So you, you have two, you create uh, two focal points with and two times the plasma in the eye. You can do that, but then you have to have a safety distance to the retina, of course. Uh, I don't mind, or I, I do it if the, f the floater is in the mid vitreous, the, then it's doable. And it's not just the treatment beam, but you see more reflections. Visibility, good visibility is the key to do a, a safe and successful floater treatment. So. You might consider, if you put in a premium multifocal lens, to if a floater is visible, to do it even before the treatment. Right. So no, no, I understand. Yeah. Um, now, the, obviously, this is a very uh, complex topic, and uh, we're not going to be able to provide any sort of a, of a primer here. But I have one practical question, which is, what are the typical power settings it's a good question, a question I, I'm, I'm uh, quite often asked. Uh, you have, obviously, you're familiar to use the yak laser in the anterior part of the eye between one and two millijoule. But think, when the power reaches uh, the, 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 the target, uh, we are deep in the vitreous and uh, the beams have to run uh, from the anterior part uh, to the power part. A lot of the energy is resorbed. So my power settings are between four to eight millijoules. Really? Yeah. And it doesn't do harm if you take care of the of the distance. Yeah, this is really, really neat stuff. And of course, you know, you, 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 you've shown just tremendous success. Uh, I, uh, Carly, I want to thank you very, very much for, for bringing this, 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 this to us. Uh, and of course, for being so very generous with your time with us today. Thank you very much.